Hello everyone, my name is Eternal Flame, and today we're here to talk about one of my favorite Jutsu Kaisen techniques of all time, being Blood Manipulation. Blood Manipulation is one of by far the most explored curse techniques in Jutsu Kaisen, however even I don't feel it's been properly fully explored, despite Blood Manipulation also being the technique we have seen that has the most actual users of it, because Blood Manipulation we have seen a total of 4 users of it, I think it's 4 currently. Oh wait, no, five counting Kenjaku, but we haven't actually seen Kenjaku use it. Anyways, that's beside the point. With Blood Manipulation having this total of four seen users of it, it is by far and away one of the most explored techniques. However, I believe it is a technique that can be explored and advanced even further, which is going to be the point of this video. Because in this video, I would like to discuss both Blood Manipulation, everything we've already seen Blood Manipulation do, as well as how to advance Blood Manipulation even further, as well as how to make it achieve its full power. But before we even get into this video, be sure to like and subscribe to anime content like this, and let's get into this. However, before we even get into this video, this video is sponsored by Fandomio, and this is especially time I recommend you get, like, if you ever wanted anime merch, now would be the time, because they have a pre-Black Friday sale going on, where you get 50% off everything, plus my own discount code that I'm going to hook y'all up for, for an extra 10% off, and they're going to have a lot more code, so I'm going to be talking about them quite a bit more often, but now is the better time than any if you want to help out the channel and get your own anime merch, either for Black Friday or for Christmas in advance, go check out the link to Fandomio in the comment section below. I really recommend them. They have some really epic merch. And let's get back into the videos. Now, up first, I'm going to go over why I'm even doing this. And I think just blood manipulation is by far and away one of the best techniques with one of the greatest amounts of potential we have seen in Jutsu Kaisen. This is purely due to the fact that that, like, Blood Manipulation is from one of the big furry family heads, directly compared to the likes of the Gojo clan head, as well as the Zenin clan head. And with the comparison between Kamo and Megami that Kamo directly makes, I feel Blood Manipulation has a lot of potential, so I wanted to take this time to explore Blood Manipulation, the already existing techniques, and figure out if we could create more techniques, or if we can advance the already existing techniques to make them even more powerful within the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. Now, this will not be a Blood Manipulation Explained video. I'm not going to go in-depth with every single one of the techniques. I'm only going to give a brief description of what they do. I'm not going to go in-depth with the users of the techniques either as well. Mainly because in the future, I do really want to make a Blood Manipulation Explained type video. This video is made to actually look at the already existing applications of Blood Manipulation and how to advance them further, as well as how to create new applications for Blood Manipulation as a technique and how to advance that and how to make it truly reach its pinnacle. However, before we even get into applications, let's look at the base technique itself, and how it functions. The base technique of blood manipulation is about manipulating your own blood within and outside of your body. However, based on what we know, it must be your own blood. And as, as a result of that, blood manipulation users are usually limited in how much blood they can create, because humans only have so much blood they are actually able to utilize. However, there have been shown to be other ways to get around this drawback. For example, if you are a cursed wound painting, you're able to turn your own cursed energy into blood. It's why Choso never runs out of blood. And if you're Kamo, Kamo was able to drain his own blood into several blood packs in order to give himself additional blood for him to use alongside the blood in his body. However, blood manipulation users do have one more weakness, which is the fact that their blood dissolves much easier in water, making it much harder for them to use blood manipulation outside of their body in water without actually directly covering the blood itself that they are going to manipulate. For the sake of this video, we're not going to assume our user of blood manipulation is a cursed womb painting like Choso is. Instead, of we're going to assume they're human like Kamo Noritoshi. However, there is an extremely easy way to get around the weakness of blood manipulation of humans not, not having enough blood, which is reverse curse technique and healing off your body. And considering the levels that we have seen people be capable of healing with reverse curse technique, especially if this is a fully mastered user of it, it should be very possible for them to overcome this weakness and get practical experience all the time because they would have to constantly use reverse curse technique in order to restore themselves and their weapons. And now we're going to talk about the weakness that blood manipulation uses directly have to water and how to overcome this, which that weakness is a lot harder to directly overcome. Thankfully, it's much less rare you're going to have to fight this, considering there are literally only two uses of water manipulation throughout the entire series, which is Megami through his elephant, as well as Dagon as a cursed spirit. But that's not good enough for us, because we want to make sure we can fight all of them as our maxed out blood manipulation user. So, the way that I, as a blood manipulation user, would get over the weakness of water is simply by shielding the water 
by creating a Shikigami that the blood itself is contained in and charged for attacks to be released onto a people. Now the applications of the Shikigami I'm going to talk a lot more about later into this video, but first I just want to directly discuss how this is going to be used to overcome the weakness blood manipulation directly has. Because blood manipulation is extremely weak to water, they can use Shikigami as shells for the blood manipulation directly as techniques are prepared inside of the Shikigami themselves in order to launch out as opponents. We also know that it's possible for anybody to create a Shikigami, but not all of them are created the same or have the same properties. So it's going to be extremely useful for the specific Shikigami with blood manipulation. We do also know it is possible to use your curse technique alongside the Shikigami as seen with Yuki. This also could be utilized to get over the first weakness of not being able to contain enough blood within the body because if you prep Shikigami enough to contain your own blood and store it ahead of time, then you are overcoming the weakness because you're going to have extra blood to utilize through the Shikigami. For example, you could just have one really massive Shikigami in the background that's entire purpose is just to carry out blood because you yourself are not able to carry that much blood on you normally, but the Shikigami is able to carry that much blood. Now, while there are a total of nine applications of of blood manipulation, I'm only going to be looking at a total of four of them and how to advance them because those are the four that can be improved upon the most, which those four that I am going to look at are Flowing Red Scale, Slicing Exorcism, Piercing Blood, and Supernova. What I'd also consider the four most powerful applications of blood manipulation as well and the four that cover all ranges. The first and easiest that I'm going to talk about is Slicing Exorcism, which Slicing Exorcism is a long-range based attack that allows the user to slice at their opponent as well as being in two different forms. The way that Kamo uses it as a disc of blood that he literally throws at Hanami, and the way that Chosu uses it as several long streams of blood in order to attack people and cut people with that attack during the Shibuya Incident Arc. Now the way to advance this technique is actually using both of these applications at the same time rather than only focusing on one. What do I mean by that? Well, use the long streams of blood that Choso usually uses with this technique rather to wrap around a person and throw them up in the air and then hit them with the slicing disc variation of the technique in order to bombard them while they're in the air, mostly because 99% of the characters within Jujutsu Kaisen don't have a way to get around actually being in the air and were forced to basically take hits while they're in the air. However, that is only just a tactic to evolve the technique. The way I'd actually evolve this technique is by taking advantage of Choso's application. Where Choso's application is a ground creating long streams of blood, this is where a binding vow should be placed on this particular application, where the blood becomes much, much thinner, but by extension, its cunning power becomes much, much grander basically creating a pseudo-cleave in a way. However, there would be the obvious drawback of, due to the technique being much thinner, it's much clearer to see and much easier to evade because it has much less of an attack range that it can generally hit. But in exchange for that, it would likely gain a tremendous buff because of the drawback that it's placed on the technique itself. This could especially be used well with attacks made to catch people off guard, especially with its newly enhanced cutting power that's going to be delivered with this binding vow amp towards it. Now the next technique I would like to talk about is piercing blood. Now piercing blood is also difficult in its own right to advance, however there are some ways you can advance it to make it even better and even more useful for combat. Which the way piercing blood works is after you use convergent, which the convergence compresses and condenses the blood to its limits, it's then transformed into a blood beam that's able to reach the speed of sound in order to try and blitz opponents with an incredibly powerful attack. Now piercing blood does have one incredibly large weakness, which is the fact that if you're able to dodge the initial piercing blood, you are able to pretty easily dodge the rest of the attack because only the initial strike that it's being launched at is at the speed of sound and the rest of it is quite slower. Now there are about two ways that I can see to overcome this weakness, which the first way is by creating a larger beam, and the second way is when you fire off a piercing blood, several piercing bloods are fired in the process of that first piercing blood in order to make it much harder to dodge, both being used with a binding vowel which makes it require a longer charge time and much more blood to be condensed into it as a result of that, leaving the opponent much more open. Which, you guys are likely going to say this. This is not Dragon Ball. People aren't going to let characters charge attacks which I do agree with. However, I already thought of that. 
Because remember when I talked about Shikigami being useful in the beginning of the video? This is where Shikigami are going to come in, and this is something I feel is extremely underrated about Shikigami and how they're used in combat, because they are really not used as much as they should be. It'd be an extremely good idea to just have a Shikigami in the background charging this new variant of Piercing Blood, while the Blood Manipulation user themselves is directly fighting against the opponent and keeping them distracted. Like, even if you don't think this is possible to create several beams through one Piercing Blood, it would still be very possible to use the Shikigami itself and just have like a bunch of Shikigami on standby charging up their own piercing bloods that all immediately launch at the speed of sound at an opponent. We'll talk about just one Shikigami being there to assist against Choso and how massive of a buff that would be, let alone two or three, that you could have a drawback on the Shikigami be that they are not extremely durable in exchange for that. Like having a Shikigami that can directly assist you in combat, utilize their own curse technique or your curse technique while allowing to assist you in combat makes a world of a difference. After all, one of the biggest advantage Yuta has is the fact that he, every fight against him is a 2v1. Now imagine a Shikigami that's just charging up a piercing blood in the background as you are directly fighting a blood manipulation user, and then suddenly you feel that you're hit by an attack that's moving at the speed of sound in order to directly go through your flesh. Now on a side note, I'm imagining that the Shikigami is shaped like a dragonfly. I just want to put that out there. I don't know why I'm imagining it's shaped like a dragonfly, but I'm just like imagining out the dragonfly's mouth a piercing blood is fired immediately at an opponent. Now the next technique I would like to focus on is Supernova before we get on to the final technique of Flowing Red Scale, which Supernova is using Converge to create multiple small orbs of blood. The user has the orbs then shoot out in every direction like a buckshot. Basically, it was invented by Cho to be a catch off guard blood bomb type of technique that creates a semi-small explosion using Convergence on an opponent that also causes a decent amount of damage in the process. Now this technique in nature is already incredible good. I don't see an actual way to advance this technique, however, I do see a way to actually advance the utilization of these techniques and tactics that can be done through Supernova because of how useful it is as a technique. And that is literally just by using it with other techniques more often, because it is such a useful technique that could be used to catch people off guard, because Choso already uses this to trap people. But imagine if he were to fire off a Piercing Blood, where after the Piercing Blood is fired around the beams itself of the Piercing Blood, when someone's trying to run at Choso, a Supernova activates and explodes on them. Or when he is using Slicing Exorcism, around the Slicing Exorcism could be these Supernovas that are ready to explode and blind a person before slicing them. There are just so many ways to use Supernova, and it should be used alongside the techniques as extra support and extra damage in order to cause even more damage to an opponent. Even in hand-to-hand, -hand, he can use it more often, where when he directly rushes someone from hand-to-hand -hand and they're about to jump back to avoid him, he just makes a supernova right out to explode on them, or he makes them explode when he's directly clashing fists with someone. There's just so many circumstances where supernova could be much more useful as a support type technique. And now finally gonna move on to flowing blood scale, which is by far and away the one I have the most ideas for how to improve. The way the flowing blood red scale functions is by increasing the user's body temperature, pulse rate, and the number of red blood cells in order to give them a massive amount of boost in both energy and physical capabilities. Now it's this state I truly believe give blood manipulation by far and away the most abilities that they can utilize which we're going to get into now for first how to advance flowing red skill and then my own custom applications I'm going to take based on what we know is capable to do with blood manipulation. Now the first of flowing red skill variants that I came up with is based on the fact that with flowing red skill you're able to alter your body's temperature which I like to call flowing red scale overheat where by touching a user of flowing red scale, you end up getting yourself extremely burned. Basically, utilizing your body temperature to your advantage to make yourself massively hotter, so when people touch you, they take extra damage on top of the damage you're already going to be delivering to them. Like, basically, imagine you're getting punched by a pan that's just been set on to full heat. That is what I'm imagining right now is the happening to the opponent. Or more accurately, imagine you're in the presence of Jogo. I don't think they'd be as hot as Jogo, but it would still be enough to damage an opponent nonetheless. Now the next variants of Flowing Red Scale are all going to be reliant on binding vows and specific binding vows made in order to make the actual results of the transformation much more powerful. Where basically all of these are going to be similar to the gates from Naruto if you have ever watched Naruto where each of them are going to have much more physical drain on the body themselves, with the strongest variant of Flowing Red Scale being one that will take out the user themselves, but will also provide the most massive boost. 
However, RCT is going to be able to help a lot because I feel like some of them are just going to be mainly just like they are to drain someone heavily. But either way, this would heavily amp a Blood Manipulation's hand-to-hand -hand ability even further considering the massive boost it already gives you normally. Because with Flowing Red Scale, Choso was able to keep up with Yuji, who Choso normally would take massive damage from Yuji in just three hits, but Flowing Red Scale was able to help him even further. Like, there could be one where after you use it, you're physically exhausted and unable to move for the rest of the battle until you heal yourself, which was where RCT could come in handy, as well as having several Shikigami that can assist you in combat, as well as one where you have to sacrifice your life, one where if you use it for a certain amount of time, you'll end up dying, but you can still have a chance to live, etc. It depends on how risky and how playful you want to be with Binding Vows, and Binding Vows, I just want to say, I feel like are one of the most underutilized things in Jujutsu Kaisen as a whole, considering how much power it can actually actually provide you. If you want to check out more and learn out more about Binding Vows, I do have an entire video going over everything we know about Binding Vows and how they are used in the series of Jujutsu Kaisen, so I really recommend checking that out after you're done here. But yeah, Binding Vows are just something that really should be utilized, especially with something like Blood Manipulation, which Blood Manipulation is already an extremely risky art on the body itself. So it seems perfect for Binding Vows because Binding Vows are a high risk, high reward type system, which even helps it even more to make this technique more and more powerful. Now I'm going to get into other applications that could be used with Blood Manipulation that honestly should be used and there's no reason that these can't exist. Mainly because what fun would this video be if we were just talking about how to advance the already existing variants of Blood Manipulation? Because while that's all good and dandy, there are ways to advance what's already existing and create the new, which there are several new applications that could work extremely well with Blood Manipulation and that I got inspiration from from Jujutsu Kaisen. Now the first technique that should be able to be done by any blood manipulation user is what I like to call blood machine gun, where, yeah, it's pretty obvious, it's just shooting out massive pellets of blood towards an opponent. However, there's a lot more to it than that. After the pellets are shot out in rapid succession, and assuming the opponent dodges, the user can then manipulate those blood pellets in order to either launch them back towards the user themselves or launch them towards the opponent as they continue to try and run, and just surround them with constant amount of projectiles that are constantly flying at them. Furthermore, if they manipulate the temperature of it, they'll be able to increase the heat of it even more, while Shikigami in the background prepares a piercing blood arrow. Another application that's more spells for trap reasons is a blood puddle, where you leave puddles of blood on the ground. Out from those puddles of blood, hands can grab or things can attach towards the opponent, which will either allow the user blood manipulation to have slight alterations and manipulations of their body, or the ability to hold them still and force them to take hits. Now another application that I thought of is entirely based on Korra if you've ever seen Kuvira fight, where Kuvira fights by placing small sheets of metal onto an opponent in order to direct their movements and have small control over their movements in battle. I can see a blood manipulation user doing the exact same thing by planting small amounts of blood onto an opponent and wrapping it around them in order to j misdirect them repeatedly and land several hits on them. Basically, if you're a blood manipulation user, use it like water bending. Furthermore, I feel blood manipulation users should also take advantage of the temperature aspect of it more often, because the ability to land extra damage through burning people and landing hot based attacks on people because they can increase temperature, at least through the heat of the blood, is incredibly useful because of red scale and the fact that we know through red scale you can increase the body temperature nonetheless, and you can use RCT to potentially heal it, which is going to be a really huge thing that I think you guys have probably noticed throughout this video. For a blood manipulation user to reach its peak, they need to have reverse curse technique. However, I don't think that's really a surprise to any of you because most of the top tiers in Jujutsu Kaisen do actually have reverse curse technique and kind of need it. However, let's finally move on to the peak of Jujutsu, the thing that is going to be most needed for a blood manipulation sorcerer to truly reach their peak. What would a domain expansion look like for a blood manipulation user and a sure hit? Well, I have three ideas for how a blood manipulation type of domain could work, and I'm going to go from least dangerous to most dangerous. Now, the first idea I have for a domain is literally just blood manipulation plus, where the user summons a massive, massive ocean of blood, and out from the ocean, they're able to use use blood manipulation and just use as much as they want without the drawback of needing it from their body. So they won't even need to use reverse curse technique anymore and they can just spam any type of blood manipulation attack that they need to on an opponent. Now this is an incredibly lethal domain but it's not like a oh you're going to die a hundred percent for sure if you're caught in this domain type of domain. Like, it's hard to fight back against, but it's still possible to fight back against. However, the next two domains, um, yeah, no, you basically lose 100% of the time if you're caught in these domains. Especially the second one because of how dangerous it is, which I'm going to talk about now. 
Now, while the second domain idea is more dangerous than the first one, it is still possible to resist and fight back against, where the sure hit is forcing your body not to move because the blood inside of the body is not able to move, which will force them to basically take several hits. If you know what Naoi's domain is, it basically has the same effect as that, where you cannot move or else your blood will fight back against your body and do damage to your cells. However, this one is still possible to survive, it's just very difficult to survive. And then there's the final domain, which is by far and away the most dangerous domain and one where you're basically guaranteed to die, which is manipulating the blood within an opponent's body. And the reason why that you're basically guaranteed to die is because, well, they can do things to you like force you to hurt yourself, force your heart to stop, force your heart to beat too fast, etc. There is just so much they can do while also overwhelming you with attacks that most characters would just die to this domain. Like, I don't think a single character, if they get caught in this domain, is going to end up living because of how powerful manipulating the blood with an opponent's body could actually be. The only character that I could see potentially living through this is, weirdly enough, Mahito, because of Mahito's ability to change the shape of his soul, and how Mahito can just change his body to make this non-issue. Other than that, like, I don't see how you fight back against this domain, if I'm going to be completely honest with you, other than with, like, simple domain, because you won't be able to use hand signs because of the fact your body is being manipulated. However, I only see it being possible to manipulate the blood within another person's body through a sure hit in a domain, and even then, I'm kind of 50-50 on this being possible. However, I do want to know what your opinion is on blood manipulation, and if I convince you that blood manipulation has the potential to be one of the most broken curse techniques in Jujutsu Kaisen, because that was kind of why I made this video, to explore how to advance all the established techniques through blood manipulation, and how to make blood manipulation into one of the top tier techniques, and actually explain why it was able to arrive with the likes of the Gojo clan and the Zenin clan in the past, and why it definitely has the potential to do so. However, that's all for me. I'm going to see you all later. Peace out.